Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's another weekly vlog and it feels like ages since I've filmed. I, uh, I've gotten back from the US yesterday and I'm sure some of you are thinking, where was last week's weekly vlog? Where was the Florida videos? Because I think I, I was planning on filming in Florida, but I just didn't. So to catch you up, if you're not sure what's happened, about two weeks ago, we went to the airport hotel, we flew to Philadelphia. We were going to Philadelphia for a few days for WrestleMania, which was at the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So we went there, got there Wednesday, I think, and had a few days before. Um, and then on the Monday, my parents and my brothers happened to be at our house in Orlando. So me and Keegan were like, well, let's fly down. So on the Monday, we flew down to Florida um, and then we had six days there, which was so, so lovely. And then flew back home yesterday. Um, I did get up to quite a bit whilst I was away. I'll insert some footage here. Um, I mainly, I did a bit of filming, but for Instagram and for TikTok, just, you know, random little clips. Um, I just, apart from that, I took all the time off. I was planning on doing some editing, filming, obviously, um, and maybe doing some writing and bits of bobs, but I was there with my family and we haven't been to Florida as a whole family for years, years and years, probably 2016 or something like that. So it was so nice. I mean, we only had one day all together. We all came staggered. So mum and dad have been there for like a week and a half. Luke flew out on a Wednesday. Ben flew out Saturday. Me and Keegan flew out Monday. Luke went home Wednesday. Me and Keegan went home on Sunday. And then Ben's coming home with mum and dad. So it was all very confusing, but it was all staggered. So we had one full day of all of us there together, which was nice, but um, I wish it could have been a bit longer. But anyway, I'm back home now. I took the time off. I feel rejuvenated. I feel good. I slept for 12 and a half hours last night. It's currently 2 p.m. and I've been up. I've been to the gym. I've gotten showered. I'm wearing my new t-shirt from Uniqlo. I got some last time, some baggy t-shirts, like the purple one, which you guys might have seen me in before. And um, I bought some more this time. Anyway, I'm just sort of trying to get sorted. Uh, in a few, maybe later this week, Keegan and I want to have a big sort out, clear out the garage, these wardrobes in the spare bedroom, um, plus our normal wardrobes, and just declutter everything. But I'm I'm resisting doing that today. I'm actually going to feed my plants now, guys. So <laughs> uh, let's start with this beauty. So this one has done really well since I left. It basically used to come up to there. And when I left, these little stems were coming. And look how big it's gotten. Love it. This plant is actually, I saw a lot in Florida, in people's gardens. It had big wooden uh, stems. So this potentially could be a massive bush, but it obviously won't because this one's an indoor plant. I've already fed them some miracle Grow before I left, which is probably why it has done really well, but it's time to feed it again. I say it every time, guys, but I just can't believe I'm getting into plants. Like, who have I become? But I absolutely love them. I love keeping them alive. I love getting new ones. It's a bit like my obsession with A, animals, because I treat them as if they're living things. I mean, they are living things. But it's also like my obsession with books, where I just want to buy them. I do that every two weeks uh, in spring. So, and, and I've used about half a bottle every time. So this is only the second time. After this, this whole bottle will probably go. So I'll need to buy some more. But luckily it's cheap. It's only like £3.50, which is like, what, $5? So I'm going to... Uh, just during spring, I'm gonna make sure I you know, use a lot of this because I want them to grow nicely. Yeah, I treat them a bit like books as well where I'm always wanting more. <laughs> I always want more books, I always want more plants. Now, I really need to repot this one. It's just not happy, but the pot is too big. And as you can see from the soil, it's sort of like, it needs packing in a bit more, but I need to repot her. It's on my to-do list, she's not enjoying it. Ava, let's have a little chat about you. Come in here then. Come on then, get on the bed. Let's give a little Ava update. So we picked up the dogs from um, Amber, Keegan's sister's house last night. She's been looking after them. She's had you quite a lot, hasn't she? When we went to Florida a month ago and then again this time. She um, She's had a lovely time and she had a groom before she went. So she's not too fluffy, which is nice and better for our carpets and floors. We don't have to hoover up much after her. Oh yes. But she's not been well. So I would insert the video on screen, but it's all vomit and diarrhea. So I don't really want to do that because I don't want to gross you guys out. But I didn't know she had a poorly tummy. She must have picked something up like on walks or something like that because I woke up this morning and there was about four piles of diarrhea in the utility room and two piles of sick. 
So I don't know in which order she did that. I don't know whether she smelt all of the diarrhea and it made her sick, or if she's just got a stomach bug and she's got vomiting and diarrhea. As you can see, she's currently barking at a van. She's um absolutely fine. She's happy in herself. But um yeah, something's not right with your tummy, is it? So we we're just having a little quiet day with Ava today. I will take her for a please um in a bit. But yeah, and normally this happens when she eats some type of animal poo, which she shouldn't be eating. So it's only her own fault. <laughs> but mm, I don't like seeing you ill. As some of you guys know, my favorite plant has been doing really well since I left. Look, she's flowering. Lovely. So I'm just going to feed her now too. And then the plant that I'm most impressed with is my apple tree, which you guys have not seen for a long time. I can't be bothered to find the vlog that it was in. Some of you guys will remember it, but when I planted my apple tree, and I got obsessed with apple trees, it started flowering and I Googled it and they're supposed to start flowering on the third week of April. And yesterday was the first day of the third week of April and it started flowering. I was like, how, how is it so to the date? It's mad. Here she is. She's still spindly, obviously, and not got many leaves, but she's now got some green leaves and these up here, Absolutely beautiful. Apparently, I think I've read, I'm not gonna risk it, that these are edible. I mean, they don't smell of anything, but um, yeah, she's doing well. So I'm hoping she might produce some apples. I mean, that's what the flowers suggest. If she's flowered in spring, she should have some apples by maybe October. So it's playing the long game, but um, yeah, I'm so glad that she's finally started flowering. I'm gonna see if I have some soil in the garage, because as you can see, the soil level has gone down and her roots are a little bit exposed there, which obviously is not good. You don't want the sun to touch the roots. So let me go to the garage and see if I've got any. I do. And guys, when I tell you that this has been on my to-do list for weeks, I mean like months, to top up the soil on my tree, and only now am I finally doing it, which I feel like is the way. After you've been on holiday, it's like you get back home and you're like ticking things off. I feel rejuvenated. So much better. Now, she does need watering down, but I have just given her her feed. So I might just leave her for a day and then water that down just so that her roots make the most of the miracle grow. because otherwise I'll just wash it out. Right, plants watered and fed. Bar a couple, I need to do those later. Right, there's a couple of things I wanna show you. Firstly, if you watch my, I think last vlog before I went away, so not the Philadelphia one, um, I was writing cue cards to do with my writing. And here finally they are in the spare bedroom, which has become a bit of a dumping ground. This is what I'm doing. So each of those cue cards is a scene in the sitcom that I'm writing. So this is just to help me literally get a bird's eye view and be able to go, oh, that third scene, no, get rid. Or that third scene, actually, that should go sixth. And the sixth scene should go third. Or, you know, see it from a bird's eye view. Because I am at the editing stages now and the structure is so hard. Before ever starting writing, I was like, oh, surely the writing part is the hardest part. Actually, I think as a creative person, I've got so many ideas and I love writing dialogue. That's not a problem. The problem is the structure. So when you're on a computer and you're scrolling through, trying to like get a sense of what scene goes where, it's apparently a lot more helpful to look at it from a bird's eye view. So that's what I've done there. Also, I think in a vlog where I went to London, I updated you guys that I actually sent what I'd written so far to my agent, manager, whatever you want to call them. I call them my manager. I've got my voiceover agent, I've got my management team who manage all things social media, but they manage everything really, not just social media, everything except voiceovers. So um, anyway, I sent it to uh, my manager and it was the first person that's ever seen my writing. And I was like, this is awful. As I proofread it in the coffee shop in London before sending, I was like, I lost all confidence in it. And I was like, ah, someone's gonna read this. And not just someone, but my manager, and it's, it's gonna be awful. Anyway, she replied after reading it and she basically was very complimentary. It honestly was like the most excited I've been in a long time when she replied just saying how talented I was, how much she'd been laughing at it and how she's starting to rally together some commissioners for us to pitch to. So yeah, that is very, very exciting. I can't believe it. Like, what I'm most happy, obviously I'm really happy that we could maybe start getting pitching to people, but I'm just really happy that someone that I know and respect in the industry thinks that I'm talented and good at writing. So anyway, I'll keep you updated if there's anything that goes on with that. But whilst I was away, I got 
two new books delivered from the Lox Library. So if you don't know, if you've not watched any of my book, um, if you've not watched my book video about the Lox Library, um, there are monthly, sub this isn't a sponsored ad book by the way, I'm just showing you things that I like. Um, I pay for a monthly subscription to a mystery box book and it's usually a fantasy book uh, usually aimed at young adults, but I tend to like reading young adult books. I don't know what that says about me. Maybe that means I'm stupid. I don't think it does. Um, but still, and they're always beautiful hardback editions with sprayed edges. Now, this book was part of the Lock Library before I ever found out about it in 2023, but it was so popular that they brought it back and with the sequel. But the thing that stood out to me about this, it's called The Book That Wouldn't Burn. So a book about books, like what could be better? But look at these beautiful sprayed edges. Look at that, like bookshelves. It is absolutely stunning. The top is green, the bottom is orange, but the books are absolutely stunning. So they've got this, the second in the series as well, the book that broke the world. So I'm really excited to read those. I mean, it's quite a hefty beast, that one. The second one's a bit smaller. And as I say, my to be read pile is absolutely huge. And so I don't know when I'll get around to reading these, but when I do, I'm gonna be so excited. Let's just look at the hardback, like without the dust jacket on it. Ooh, look at that. The greatest stories can reach the stars. Lovely, it's absolutely, ooh, look at those end pages. Look at that, oh, I just love it, guys. Absolutely love it. My obsession has gone from antique books, which I've been obsessed with since I was a teenager, as you guys know, some of you know. Got a big collection of antique books, mainly antique children's books. Just absolutely love them, have always loved them, don't know why. It's now stemming into modern day special editions as well. But anyway, enough, I won't bore you with any more of that. Oh, right, time to switch the camera off and actually get some work done for the next 50 minutes and then I'm gonna take the dogs for a walk. Ava's collar actually broke while she was away as well. Um, it was a couple of years old. Lucy actually chose it for her. Well, chose the colour. I wanted to get Ava a pink one and Lucy was like, no, <laughs> we'll get a red wine coloured one. Um, and I can't find another one of the same vibe, but that's on my list to do tonight. But I do have Ava's smart set. So Ava has like a dirty collar and lead just for these muddy walks. And then she has a nice set, like a matching, <laughs> put it on myself, uh, a matching collar and lead in this pattern that I, was a bit more expensive that I got when I went to the New Forest show with my mum. But now she's gonna have to wear this on the muddy walk because I haven't yet ordered her collar, have I? She's sniffing it like, why are you getting my good collar out? I just need to get this dog tag on in case she goes missing while she's wearing this. And then tonight, it's on my to-do list tonight to get her a new collar. Come on then. Oh, good girl. Oh, very pretty. Yeah, you ready for your walkies? Yeah, are you ready too, Fen? Let's go. Hey everyone, it's Wednesday today. It's 12 o'clock and I'm just going to Starbucks to do some work before my hair cut at one o'clock. Oh, it's been a busy morning. Me and Keegan have decided to, from now on, implement that Wednesday mornings are for happy, healthy homo. So he stops, he downs tools for his work. I down tools for mine and no matter what, Wednesday mornings are for happy, healthy homo. Um, so we spent the last two and a half hours just working on that. Uh, we've recorded an episode of the podcast, of next week's episode. That's been sent to the editors and then we've been doing some planning, some more filming, bulk filming for s some Instagram stuff and then buying some equipment for our home studio, our new home studio that we've had set up. We've had to do that because it's now at the stage where the podcast, like we get out what we put in and we want the podcast to grow and so we need to put in the hours, we need to stop treating it like a side hustle and now treat it like a hustle, a main hustle. A main hustle, not the main hustle. But um, And actually we've had such a productive two and a half hours because for the last year of the podcast existing, we've just been grabbing any bits of spare time. Obviously in December, I, some of you will remember we hired Harry, who's our first ever hire for the podcast. So he helps us with all the admin bits and just everything to do with the podcast really. Not just admin, but without him, the podcast would have not much focus so he whips us into shape which is great so yeah that's been a really productive morning and 
Now I'm focusing on my own stuff for the rest of the day, which is nice. Starting with a haircut, which is very much needed. I don't know about you guys, but I, like, I feel like haircuts make such a big difference to my confidence. <laughs> like getting a fresh fade on the back and sides, I just feel great after it, so I cannot wait for that. I'm also trying this new thing that my dad's been on at me for a long time to do, and he was actually talking to Keegan about it whilst we were all sunbathing in Florida. We were just sunbathing, and they were talking about processes and work and stuff like that, like technical stuff. And dad was saying to Keegan, well, I always I keep telling Joel what he needs to do just to gather some data is track everything that he does. Um, and you know, if you do an hour's work for YouTube, put that in the log, an hour on YouTube. If you do 20 minutes on Instagram, 20 minutes on Instagram, happy out the Omer, two hours for happy out the, two hours. And by the end of the week, you'll have all this data of how much time you're spending on each individual thing and whether that needs to change or whether that's good, whether you could do more work or it could ease off a bit or whatever. And he was like, Joel always ignores me though, he doesn't do it. And I was like, I don't know if it's because he set, told Keegan this and said that I was ignoring him, but it's made me go, oh, yeah, I really need to do that. But he has literally been telling me that for years and I've just ignored him because he's my dad. And you know, what son listens to their dad? Not really. So anyway, I have started that today. So I've put in how much work I've been doing today. So in total, I've done about three hours of Happy Healthy Homo stuff. I've, I've tracked this filming. So, you know, I've been filming now for about four minutes. So that will go in the diary, however long this clip is. That'll be like, oh, I've done that much on YouTube. When I go now to Starbucks, I'm probably gonna do a bit of writing, so I'll put, you know, it's unpaid work, but it's work that I'm doing to hopefully earn money one day. But yeah, hopefully I can gather some data and know how much time I'm spending on each thing. And then you could get really deep and do like, well, how much money have you earned from each thing? And you know, is that worth it, blah, blah, blah. But basically that's a fun type of thing you gotta do when you're self-employed. And when you stretch yourself too thin, which I'm in desperate need of a drink. I am on my way to Starbucks, so I'll just wait. But yeah, how's your week going, guys? Are you having a good week? Is spring? Is it springing where you are? It's springing here. It's been springing here for a while. Lots of green grass, lots of daffodils everywhere. Blue sky, kind of, but it's a bit cloudy. But I'm very much enjoying spring. I love spring. I love it when it's sunny. First port of call when I go to Starbucks is I've got some messages from my manager to reply to because I've been just fully in on Happy Healthy Homo. Normally, if something else comes in whilst I'm doing it, I will just split my focus and go, oh, I just replied to this email. Whereas now I'm like, no, when I'm doing Happy Healthy Homo, I'm just doing that. Now when I'm going to do my work, I'm just doing that. I've just gotten back from getting my hair cut. What do you think? <laughs> um, right. I did, whilst I was out, again, another job that's been on my to-do list for eternity, is to repot this plant, which some of you may remember, I repotted finally, after I left it in London, I finally brought it up north, and she was dying a bit, and I think she was basically, I planted her into like a ceramic pot, because I was a newbie, I was a little beginner plant daddy, and before I realized like, you know, you shouldn't do that, they should be in one with drainage, and then you put that in the ceramic pot. But some of you rightfully pointed out, this pot is too big for this plant, meaning I can't drench her. So when I drench her all the way through, it retains so much moisture, and then she'll get root rot, which is why she's not enjoying it. So I've just been out and bought two different size pots. I think she might need this really small one, a lot smaller, but let's see. What do you need, darling? First step is ask the plant. What do you need? Which size? Um, I think she's saying this, but let's let's dig it out and see. See, her roots are tiny. That is it. That is going to be plenty big enough. See, it's all wet in there. Sorry, honey. I've not been a very good dad to you. I mean, look at that. That's half a pot of soil, which just was retaining all this moisture, never drying out and giving her root rot. So hopefully this will be a lot nicer for her. I hope I don't kill her because I've had her for years. Mum and dad bought her for me. She's like, Ava's like, are you talking about someone, a girl other than me? Oh, and to think for years I've had her in this massive pot and look now she's far too small for it, but I won't water her, I'll let her dry out. See, as someone who's newbie going to intermediate plant daddy. I'm like, when people say to me, and I was one of these people, and my mum is one of these people until recently when I've given her some plants, it's like, oh, I just can't keep plants alive. And I've realized, <laughs> like what most of us do who aren't into plants is you just buy a plant, any plant, a plant you like the look of, shove it anywhere in your house, 
and water it once a week and hope for the best. And I'm like, that is why you're not good at getting plants because you haven't bought plants for the room. Like you need to start with the room and go, is this room sunny? Is it dark? Is it warm in here? Is it humid? Is it dry? And then pick a plant that is gonna thrive. For example, this one here absolutely adores the sun. So when I initially got her and put her in the shade, she didn't like it, but she's thriving now. I'm learning a lot. I'm out of breath. <laughs> You want some attention. You want a walkies, don't you? We better go. Do you want a walkies? Come in then. Walkies. Well, it was nice earlier, but it's hailstoning now. I don't know if you can even see it on camera or bouncing off my jacket. I suppose this is what they mean by April showers, isn't it? My hairdresser did say, my barber did say today that um, he had a member of the council, the local council in, and he, the councillor, said that they've issued gritting trucks to go and start gritting the roads because apparently it's going to snow in April. Um, so I'm going to check my weather forecast to see if that's true because I've not seen anything about that, but the hail would suggest maybe it's true. I've just had a very exciting delivery, guys. I've got a new security camera from IMU. Now, I didn't tell you this. A few weeks ago, we had someone break into Keegan's car. When I say break in, they <laughs> Keegan left his door unlocked, and they but they were going around in balaclavas trying to like try all the cars on our road. Just so happened they struck lucky with Keegan's, although all he had inside were like probably about ten pounds in coins, um, and they took all of that. However, th this happened a few weeks ago. Keegan and I were tucked up in bed, fast asleep. Suddenly, heard this stomping down the stairs. The kids are running down, knocking on our bedroom door, and they were like, "Someone's, someone's in balaclavas on the driveway. Someone's." And we were like, well, what's going on? And they were like, Fletcher had woken up, had gone downstairs to go and get like a glass of water or something. And he saw two guys in balaclavas walking up the main road. And then apparently they came onto our driveway and were looking around the cars. I wasn't worried about something like this happening because we have a doorbell with a camera on it. I looked and there was no alerts on that app about on the camera. And so I said to Keegan like, are we sure he's not like dreaming? Like, did this really happen or is he like, is he scared? Has he seen something? Like thought he's seen something, but he hasn't. Because nothing, our cars didn't look broken into at all. But the next morning, Keegan went in his car to take the kids to school. All the money was gone. Everything in the doors were in the footwell. And we think it turned out that he'd, he'd left his car unlocked. So anyway, the doorbell had not picked this up because it sort of captures like the walkway to our front door, but it doesn't capture the driveway. So we've decided to install the iMu 2K wireless security camera on the other side of the driveway in the hopes that it will cover like the whole of the front of the house between this and the doorbell. So come with me, let's go fit this. I've put the camera on charge over here and I've downloaded the app. Um, so let's just see, move this around. Hello, hello, oh look, there I am. <laughs> Maybe this could be my new vlogging camera. <laughs> anyway, that needs to charge up and I need to take Ava to the vets now. So I'll go do that whilst this charges and then I'll install it when I get home. Here we are, right in the corner of the garage. It's got a bit of shelter as well, even though it is waterproof. That's good, that's gonna capture the whole driveway. So already, because I just moved it, I've got a notification saying motion detected because it's synced up with my watch. Let's go grab my phone and see what we can see. I'm so excited for this. Motion detected on my phone as well. Oh look, you can see me on there. <laughs> There's me vlogging. So it's obviously what it's done is it's not recording 24 seven. It just starts when there's motion detected. So it's started recording as soon as it's detected me there. And when I've gone, it's not. And look, you can see all here. These are the past events when it has been motion detected, when I've been playing with it from the box. I can always go back through and select on one of them and rewatch what it was. It was me carrying the camera, but how cool. I can go back and rewatch what the motion was. It was me vlogging. What's that vlogger doing on the driveway? Now that is so cool. So that means if we got burgled again, we would catch it. I'm very, very pleased with that. One of the things that really stood out to me about this camera is the advanced motion detection. So it's got technology where it knows the difference between a human being and like a cat 
going down the street or even a raindrop. If a raindrop went past some cameras, it might go motion detected, but it's got advanced motion detection, so that shouldn't happen. Also, it can trigger a security alarm. So, and like you've seen, it will send a real-time security update to my phone and also because my phone's linked to my watch, it will come through to my watch as well. Apparently, it has incredible night vision, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like in low light. It records in 2K HD and it has 120 day battery life. So that was one thing that I was really worried about. Like, will it last? Will the battery last on these cameras? But 120 days. So if my maths is correct, that should be three charges a year. Also, it comes with four gigabytes of local storage. So you don't need to buy any extra storage to store the video footage. That should be enough. And just in case you do need some cloud storage, when you buy this camera, you get one year's worth of free iCloud storage just to tide you over and see if you need it. There are also lots of customizable features that you can do inside the app. For example, you can customize the detection zone so that if anyone enters this zone, it will alert to protect the area. Also, if something is a very high frequency area, so for example, I've customized it not to alert me every time a car drives up and down the street. It's really small as well, and I didn't actually need any special tools to install it. And I joked about it being a vlogging camera earlier, but you can actually take it with you. So if you were to go camping, you could take it with you. It doesn't need a Wi-Fi connection to work. And yeah, if you don't want to use it for just security, there's a time-lapse feature. So you could actually point it towards the sky and do a time lapse of the sunrise or the sunset. Anyway, I am absolutely buzzing with that. I feel like it's a weight off my shoulders, some extra peace of mind. Because the road that Keegan and I do live on, there's only 12 houses here. It's not like it's a busy main road. As some of you have seen from the dog walks, we live in the countryside. There's just 12 houses, so we're quite vulnerable here. So that is a massive load off my mind where I know that we've got full... We've got full coverage across the front of the house. We've got the doorbell, which gets the front door, and then I've got the iMu 2K, which should get the entire driveway and the street opposite, which is brilliant. I will leave the Amazon link for the iMu down below. So if you are interested, head to the description or the first comment, the pinned comment, and I will link it up there so you can have a look for yourself. But yeah, I am really, really impressed with that. Right, we're in the car on the way to the vets, aren't we? You've got your lovely collar on and your lead set. Very rarely does she wear this. That's the poo bag. Just And it's just so nice. I only keep it for best. So like going to the vets, basically I keep it for wherever won't get muddy. And then I've got her vaccination certificate. Yeah, you don't know where you're going yet. You're not gonna be happy about this, hun. She absolutely hates the vet. She's terrified. Ever since she got spayed, she's terrified of the vets. Fen, apparently, loves the vets. He gets so excited to get all the attention. But I was told that at the time, uh, they were like, it tends to be female dog, bitches, <laughs> tend to hate the vet if they've been spayed because it's a more traumatic experience. With the boys, they just have a tiny slit and, you know, take the testicles out or lop them off, you know. But with her, she had a scar all the way up her tummy and it was a lot more traumatic to recover from. So they said, isn't that interesting? They said that it's, it's girl dogs that hate the vets more than boy dogs. And you hate it. And she's gonna hate me for taking her there, but you're with me, you're safe. It's just an injection and a checkup. Just a pre-vets treat. <laughs> right, I just stopped at Dunkin' Donuts to get me a coffee, third coffee of the day, but also uh, to get Ava a little puppuccino because she deserves it. I mean, you haven't been to the vet just yet, but still, she deserves it. This is actually my first Dunky D coffee in weeks. I haven't had one since I've been back from Florida. I don't know if it's just conditioning that, you know, I drink Dunkin' Donuts coffee more often than any other coffee now that I've moved up north, or if I genuinely love it, but I'm like, it does just, to me, it's it's the best of the takeaway coffees. I don't know why. Weigh yourself. Come on. Right, vet done. That was very quick. Good girl. She was very brave. Well, she didn't cry when she got injected, but look at this. <laughs> she was burying her face in my arm. She just couldn't look at the vet. She didn't want anything to do with them, but she was a lot braver. <clears throat> That is actually progress for Ava. Um, normally she cries, she whimpers, she won't go in. I'm like dragging her in. So you're a lot more brave this time. You didn't even cry when the needle went in. But apparently she didn't have a kennel cough because the vaccination for that, they said there's a national shortage. 
So she'll have to get that at another point. So Ava's in pain since her injection. She's been very dramatic <clears throat> and she keeps crying every time Ben tries to play with her. Or if we stroke her too hard on this side, she cries. So it, babe, it was a tiny injection. You're so dramatic, but I love you. Hey everyone, it's Friday and I have, I've had a busy morning guys. I've been up since 6.30, it's now 10 a.m. And I've been up doing a bit of work, had my coffee, saw to Ava, who's not feeling well after her injection. Last night, she kept whimpering any time one of us touched her on her hip. And she wouldn't lie down, because I think it was painful for her to lay down. So she just would, like, stand there and just stare. It was so sad. This morning, she's woken up, and she's not in pain, because I'm rubbing the area, and she's not whimpering, which is good. But she's not eating. Uh, but the cleaners just arrived and she told me that it's like babies when they have injections that they're not well for a while So maybe she'll eat tonight. I don't know I tried to force feed her some peanut butter just so that she ate something and she did eat that eventually But yeah, she's not eaten properly, but poor old Ava, uh, but I've just walked the dogs um, Before coming here and I'm at Dunkin Donuts. Here is Dunkin Donuts. Of course it is. Where else would I go? I've got my laptop. I'm gonna be doing some editing before heading into Leeds and then I'm gonna go and do a hit class I've then got a hygienist appointment at the dentist in Leeds, uh, but that's not until 4.30. So I'm out of the house all day today from about 9.45 until probably 6, 6.30. So it's a full-on day. I've got a ton of work to do, and at least the workout will sort of break up the day. Anyway, this is Editor Joel. I'm just finishing off this video. I'm going to end it here because it's already 30 minutes long. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it in some way. If you're new, please subscribe. I post videos every single week. And I will see you next week for another weekly vlog. See you.